Welcome back to Dazzling Stepping Stone. Today we are going to discuss about different characteristics of bio signals and what are the different recording modes. In the last session we have discussed about different types of electrodes and how different potentials are generated from human body. How can we record the potential using two electrodes and what are the problems are arising while recording. Today let us discuss about what is bioelectric signal, what are the characteristics of bioelectric signals, what are the different recording modes. Also we are going to discuss about a simple coding task. Let us discuss everything one by one. First you should know what is signal. We know that signal is a physical quantity which varies with time. So signal it may be a sound. All the informations can be shared between people or devices. Even we are from long distance, we can share the information or instructions. Now, we are going to discuss about bioelectric signals. So, the bioelectric signals are generated from human body. The signals may be very low amplitude. Also, it may be very low frequency electrical signals. So it can be generated from human body. The bioelectric signals are generated from self-regulatory system that is our body internal organs are creating the potential. So it can be measured through the changes in the potential across a cell or an organ. The potentials can be generated from different parts of our body. It is called as bioelectric signal. Just to see this example. Consider our brain. For example, if anyone is asking any question, now you want to respond for the question so that your brain is doing some action. First, while you are thinking the potential will be generated in your brain that is synthesized. So it is recollecting and it is producing the information into understandable format. That is, it is decoding the potential into understandable form that is converting into a voice signal right so if here you should know what is decoding so i will say an example for decoding see the sentence after seeing that can you understand anything from this of course i know that you can't understand anything from this sentence now now see this can you Guess what is available in this data? I have highlighted K, A, K in front of each and uh, uh, every word. See here. So the first line, it is representing as encoder data. So here we are highlighting all the K, A. If any continuous K, A is there, I am highlighting that. Now, if you know the key of this encoded data, you can recover the original information. Now see this, if you remove K from all the, all this, definitely you can get this sentence. What is your name? So this is the actual decoder data. So if the data is in the encoder format, we can't understand. So it should be converted into understandable format. So that we are using the concept decoding, right? So in this free, previous figure, you can understand that the potential which is converted into voice or sound signal. Then only others can understand. So what are the bioelectric signals? ECG, electrocardiogram. So it belongs to the heart activity of the patient. EMG, electromyography. Myo means related to muscle movement. Next, EOG, electroacheleogram. So it is also a biopotential signal due to the movement of eyes. Next one is EEG, electroencephalogram. So it is the bioelectric signal due to the activity of brain. Next one is GSR, galvanic skin response. So due to the skin, the potential is generated. So that is also the bioelectric signals. Sometimes the signal strength may be weak. It may be having low amplitude and low frequency. Sometimes we have to use signal conditioning. 
you know that what is signal conditioning before we are processing the signal to the next stage we are conditioning the signal based on the requirement correct for example if you are measuring any parameter using sensor first we have to process the data for the next stage of operation so that we can use amplification and filtering see this figure so this is the noisy signal so we are using signal conditioning or we can use filters so that so that the output will be smooth the signal so this is having more noise this noise is removed and we are getting the exact signal that is called as filtered signal need of signal conditioning if the input signal is non linear we can use signal conditioning processes and it can be converted into linearized signal if the amplitude of the input signal is higher then we can reduce the signal amplitude by using attenuation concept next if the signal is having very low amplitude we can increase the signal strength by using amplification if the signal is having more noise we can use filter and we can change the signal as noise free if the signal is unlocked but we need signal in digital format we can use the process unlock to digital conversion and the output will be digital and if the input is non isolated we can convert it into isolated to protect the costliest equipment surge protection surge means abrupt change in the signal so the surge protection unit which observes the peaks available in the original signal so this surge protection unit will remove the unnecessary peaks and it is producing the exact sinusoidal signal now let us move to biosignal characteristics this is the important topic see this tabular column here we have mentioned different types of bioelectric signals and also we are going to represent what are the frequency ranges what are the amplitude ranges and what type of electrode we are using for measuring this potential what is the origin of the bioelectric potential so everything we will discuss now first potential is ecg so the bioelectric signal is called as ecg that is electrocardiogram so the origin of ecg signal is heart the amplitude and frequency value values are mentioned here so frequency is 0.05 to 100 hertz amplitude is 10 to 5000 microvolt surface electrode we are using to measure this ecg signal next bioelectric signal is eeg electroencephalogram so the origin of bioelectric signal is brain frequency is 0.1 to 100 hertz amplitude is varying from 2 to 200 microvolts and the type of electrode used is either we can use surface electrode or needle electrode next type of bioelectric signal is emg electromyogram so the origin of this bioelectric signal is skin muscles m for muscles the frequency range is from 5 to 2 kilohertz amplitude is varying from 20 to 5000 microvolts the electrode used is surface electrode or needle electrode next one is egg electrogastrogram the origin of bioelectric signal is stomach see the origin is gastrointestinal tract so what is gastrointestinal tract so it's a tract which is starting from mouth to anus part of the body Okay. So, we are measuring the potential from the stomach that is called as EGG. The frequency value is range, ranges from 0 0.05 to 0 0.2 hits. Amplitude is varying from 10 to 350 micro ohms and we are using surface electrode for measuring this EGG. Next bioelectric signal is ERG, electroretinogram or for retino. So, retino means it related to the eye. So the origin of potential is retina of eye. The frequency is varying from 0 0.01 to 200 and the type of electrode is used as corneal electrode. Next EOG electroacclogram. So electroacclogram it is related to eye. See the origin of potential is corneal retinal potential. So this EOG is created due to the eyeball movement the amplitude of eog is varying from 10 to 3500 microvolts 
and for measuring this EOG we can use a yeah, very small surface electro miniaturized surface electrodes we can use so from this tabulation you can understand what are the different types of bioelectric signals and what are the ranges of frequencies what are the ranges of amplitudes what are the different types of electrodes we can use what are the origins of potentials now let us move to recording modes So these are the different recording modes. First one is unipolar mode. Second one is bipolar mode. Third one is average mode. What is unipolar mode? Unipolar. So here we are measuring the potential of each electrode with respect to one electrode. See, the, while we are measuring a potential from the brain or any part of the body, how we can say this is unipolar mode? If you measure the potential of each electrode with respect to one reference electrode, then it is called as unipolar. At the same time, how we can define bipolar mode? If you are measuring the potential between two electrodes, bipolar. So, if you are measuring potential between two electrodes which are closely spaced, those electrodes are successive electrodes. While we are measuring the EEG signal, the potential we are measuring between successive electrodes which are closely spaced. Then the mode is called as bipolar mode. Last type of mode is average mode. Here we are having the meaning average. We are taking average. So here the potential can be measured between one electrode and we are taking average value of all the electrodes. That is called as average mode. Because if you are measuring the potential, we need a uh, two electrode potentials so that is the formula b equal to e1 minus e2 so that we are measuring potential and we are taking difference right and we are measuring the actual potential so in average mode we have to take average of all other electrodes also we are measuring potential from one electrode right and we are taking the difference that is called as average mode see i think you have understand what are the different recording modes and in the last session I have given one task how to generate a sinusoidal signal and how to generate a noisy signal how we can add noise with original signal that is a concept see by using MATLAB how can you create a noisy signal it's a simple task same like that you can take the ECG or EEG or any kind of signal and you can add any noise. Also you can create a noisy signal and also you can use any kind of filtering mechanisms and you can remove the noise signal. So first for uh, starting the coding you can start with simple programs like this. So just you can create a sinusoidal signal. Also you can generate a random noise signal. Then you have to add both the signals. These two signals are having equal length. Then only you can add. Now you are creating the corrected signal. Also it is called as noisy signal. I think you, you can understand this. Now task 2. So the same task and you can take. Already I have informed you to take a sinusoidal signal. Now the task 2 for you is you can you take the same concept but you have to use your own voice signal just you have to record your voice signal using voice recorder now you have to bring the voice signal into your software platform that is the original signal again you can generate any one noise signal it may be random noise signal otherwise a gaussian noise signal now you can mix both the signals and you can create a noisy signal so this is today's task I hope that you can understand the concept. Keep on trying to get success. Thank you for watching this video.